Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pat Taste Performance. This is going to be my first video log on keeping the green in Greenlawn. That's where I live. I live in Greenlawn. So, uh, as you guys know, if you guys see my intro video, uh, I take very good pride. I take a lot of pride in my lawn. So, I consider myself a grass hole. So, uh, I'll post more pictures of my lawn as we go along. But, uh, today is April 17th, 18th. And we are going to make our first application, um, in which is a huge step in your lawn. Uh, the first um, process we're going to go over is we're going to talk about yard prep. We are going to thatch. We have my blue bird thatcher, old blue. Okay. Then we are going to aerate. This is my first time aerating. We got the red baron here. We have my Toro 680 aerator that I just acquired uh, maybe about two weeks ago. So before that, before I had an aerator, I was just using my Thatcher. So the difference between a Thatcher and a split seater from what I found by looking at equipment is that it has a hopper in the back. So as you put slices in your lawn, right, it's dropping seed. But it almost looks identical. So what I was doing is I was thatching my yard Right, and as soon as I get done thatching, I would drop it down another level, and I would make it put slits in the ground. I just did like a test pass yesterday, yeah. So they're gone, which is fun. So now this year, I'm going to be using an aerator. So that's where I'm going to do most of my uh, overseeding. Okay, I run a Husqvarna 570 BFS, which is equivalent to the Red Max 7500. Believe it or not, I am a huge fan of battery powered tools. I run a Cobalt 40 volt weed whacker with the bump feed head. Um, side note, I also have their chainsaw, their pole saw, their articulating hedge trimmer, their hedge trimmer, and their pole saw. So I'll probably do a review on those too as well because this is going to be year. I already had them for a year. So they're just, they're just great, great, great machines. So what we're going to talk about today as well is what we're going to be using. We have our Scott's, Scott's Edge Guard Spreader, right? Our pre emergent is going to be a Lebanon Pro Scape. Now, the reason why I needed, I want an aerator this year is I'm switching my grass to Kentucky Tall Fescue, right? So, my lawn striped and was great. Um, I'll put a picture of what I use. Believe it or not, I used to get seed at uh, Ocean State. It was like six or seventy nine nine six or seven ninety nine a bag, and um, it was a rapid turf, and it was awesome. My lawn stripe, great. So I'll put a couple pictures right now to refresh your memory. But, you guys down south have the striping patterns that are just out of this world. So, you guys run fescue, so I'm going to switch to a tall fescue. Every place I wanted to get the seed from was 200 bucks or above. Believe it or not, Amazon had the best price at 100 bucks, And this came from lawn and pest control supply via Amazon. 100 bucks delivered to my front door. And yes, we are overseeding, so I am going to use this entire bag on my front yard. Okay? We're going to do some topsoil as well. I got 10 bags of that. So then, uh, you know, before you go about your lawn, you just want to do a brief overview. You want to take note of your sprinkler heads. Because you don't want to mess those up. Luckily, when I did my sprinklers, I have them along the edge here. So it's perfect. Here's the other one. Right there. Right? And I have one in the bed that doesn't matter. All right, You can see I do have some grass growing, which is fine. Like I said, the New York weather has been off a little bit. So the season has been really, really kind of messed up. And then I also have some heads over here, which should be along the perimeter as well. Right, right there too. 
are more along the line. So now I know when I go with my thatch or my aerator, I can run up and down the yard free as I go. Now if you don't know, you can put sticks or they sell little flags at Home Depot that are, are pretty cheap enough. Now before you do anything, you also want to make sure your yard's in check. Um, I had my sprinkle company, McCormick, come. They're great. They did a uh, test on my system, opened it up, checked everything. They found out that one of the sprinkle heads I put in was no good. They wanted to charge me 65 bucks. went to Home Depot, $8.99. I'm good to go. So now, if you didn't do your spring or fall cleanup, now is the time you have to do it. Because you want to give your lawn, like you're basically starting with a clean, fresh palette. So if you have, you know, your leaves and your debris and all the other way, you are not going to have a successful lawn. Now, my method for a lawn is if it's green, it's for me. If you have a dog, just stop watching this video. Because you have to pick a dog or a nice lawn. You cannot have both. It is physically impossible to have both. Because the dog will ruin your yard. Um, so that's why I mainly do my front yard, is I get a lot of foot traffic in my backyard. And uh, when I dog sit, my brother, my parents' dog, he does his business in the backyard and we walk him. He does not go on the front yard. I have a good relationship with my neighbors. They are not allowed to walk on the front yard. Yes, I am that type of person. Especially when we go through the first step process, you are not going to touch your lawn for at least three weeks. Now, last year, I didn't touch my lawn for maybe about a month, month and a half. My wife was going bonkers. And I'll throw a couple pictures of what my yard looked like in a month, month and a half. And I had people coming up saying what a beautiful, lush green lawn I had. So I actually didn't do my first cut, I think, to like a month and a half, two months. And when I cut my grass, I didn't even do it at the cutting height that I wanted. You do not want to cut, you do not want to make severe drastic changes in your lawn cut as you do it. Because then you're putting a lot of stress on the blades. Um, you're going to scalp it, you're going to burn it out, so you just literally want to start shaving the top your first couple of cuts until you establish your correct height. And depending on your lawn care plan, um, everybody's going to be different. You cut either two or three times a week or once a week. So I used to cut two times a week, sometimes three depending on growth, but I wanted a really, really nice stripe, so I switched down to one. And that meant me sometimes double cutting my grass because I would have like little like clumps of, of grass. So I would just go over it in the same pattern that I cut and everything was handy dandy. So uh, right now I took the Time Master out. This is my weapon of choice all year long. I run a modified Time Master with the striping kit. A couple other things done to it. Um, I have it set up in its current state for side discharge, but since we're going to be thatching, my first step is we're going to put the bag on here because we are going to be bagging my thatch. But remember, we're also going to be prepping the soil. So as you guys can see, I have some weeds here and stuff like that. So I'm going to go about just pulling these up or pulling them out. You know, because remember, the less stuff in the yard, the more grass it's going to take its place. Okay, and then I'm actually going to cut my yard, you know, edge it as if I'm going like a normal, a normal routine because you want to establish your edge lines, okay, especially along the border because the deeper the edge, obviously more border, but it's also another way for drainage for your water. Now, something I could never, ever stop is the buildup of sedge around my sprinkler heads. But remember, if it's green, it's for me. So I guess I kind of run, you know, a hybrid program. You know, in the sense that you could do organic or straight up chemicals. And, you know, either way, you know, that gets very expensive and time consuming. Especially the organic rat. The chemical rat, you know, isn't so bad. But, you know, I what happens is now I'm going to do my first treatment. And I'm gonna, I downloaded the Scott's app. You don't have to use Scott's products, but you know, I do, I do a mix of Scott's products and a little bit of everybody else's. And then, uh, you know, I put that, that's my calendar, and then it'll notify you, hey, another application. 
another application, another application. Now your watering schedule, because you're growing grass, goes back to kindergarten, that you have to water daily. When establishing new grass, you want to water at least once a day, but you really should be doing two to three times a day. Now, we are in April. April showers bring me flowers, so let Mother Nature, God, Allah, whoever you believe in, let him do some of the work for you too. Because you could water your grass for however long you want, but as soon as it rains and you know Mother Nature takes a course, that is the best water application for your yard and your landscape. You cannot replace that. We mimic it with our sprinkler systems, but nothing is better than, <clears throat> than letting Mother Nature rain. So, yeah, so I'm going to put you guys on the stand, and I guess we'll try and do a time lapse of me just going over my lawn, you know, picking, weeding, cutting, you know, and edging. Alright, so it's my first weed whack of the season. Obviously, it's going to be practice as we get better along. I will get better. Like anybody else. Remember, I do this once a week. Alright, so let's just take a quick walk through around. This is my edge. Not the straightest, but it'll get there. Okay. So then now. We're going to set the time master up to cut the grass. Because remember, we're going to do the first pass, get everything down. So we're going to switch this up. Batching, not wound cutting. So the striper comes off, the side discharge comes off, and the mulch plug comes off too. I'm gonna hug up this bag. We are good to go. So, Toro has everything labeled in letters. So I cut on C, which is a pretty high letter. So we're gonna drop this down. So we cut on C. I dropped it down two levels to E. And I'm gonna make my first pass and we'll see how this goes. So we're done putting down our first cut. Now we're gonna run around with the thatcher, okay? Now when you thatch your yard, we're gonna go four ways. We're gonna to come towards the house, first pass. Vacuum that up, suck that up depending on how much we got. Actually, we're gonna suck it up. Then we're gonna go back away towards the street. We're gonna suck that up. And then we're gonna go in a crisscross pattern from side to side and then we're good to go so what you want to do is you want to take your thatcher for here we're going to have it set on four and we're just going to make a quick test run and see how it comes out all right and that's when you make your adjustments don't go balls to the walls yet come on choke
so we raised it enough. Alright, so this is going to be our height. We're going to go with three. All right, so this is pass number one with the Thatcher. See how my first pass this way? I went towards the street. So now we're gonna come with the, we're gonna come with the lawnmower. Right, and I thatched last year too. I'm, I'm cutting you guys off. I did three full bags my tour, with my Toro. Time is, so three full bags last year. So now we're going to take our first approach, remember, we went towards the street, up and down, right, towards the house. Now when we do another pass, again, we're going to start at the street, and we're going to make our way towards the house. But first, let's suck this all up. Honestly, not that bad. I'll be very impressed. Remember, I side discharged, and um, I I'm very rough on my lawn because in the winter, this becomes my snowblower or test ground. So that's why I have my bare spot here. And a little bit over there because if you guys notice when I sell things this is where I put the machine and I also have a hump here too so uh, we'll go about knocking that down all right so I'm gonna put you guys back on the tripod and time-lapse we're gonna suck this up with the lawnmower All right, so this is after the first pass. You can see the bag is it's about 90% full. Remember, three full bags last year, so <clears throat> and I have a better lawnmower last year too. This is my first year. This is my second year with the Time Master. So we'll empty that out and we'll start with our second pass. Now remember, we made our first pass at the far corner going towards the street. Now we're going to start at the back corner. We're going to go towards the house. Alright guys, check this out, pass number two. Remember we reversed our pattern. Look, we're still pulling up. So like I said, if you guys never thatched before, you're gonna see a lot more than this. Do not freak out. Do not freak out. Remember, your lawn is gonna be like a bruise. It's gonna look a lot worse before it gets better. And remember we are talking about slit seating and thatching? This is what I was talking about before. You can see these little lines here. When I was done thatching, I would actually drop my thatcher, which I'm going to do anyway, even though we have the aerator. I'm going to drop it down the notch below. We're going to put deep grooves. All right? We're good to go. All right, so we're going to, we're going to suck this up with the mower. And then, um, listen, I'm not going to stop for steps three and four, right? Because we're going to do four passes. All right, so now we did, remember, one towards the street. Then we did the same thing back towards the house, right? Now we're going to do our first, our third pass is going to be towards the neighbor's yard. Okay, we're going to bag in between. Then our final step is going to be the same way, but we're going to start from the neighbor's yard towards the driveway. Alright, so I'm just, I'm not even going to stop in between. Alright, we'll, we'll keep this movie going. This video going.
All right, so if you guys seen, I did my last pass, and then I made an executive decision that I was going to, that just wasn't enough thatch, I decided, you know what, I'm going to do my last pass as well. I dropped down another notch, and you could see it started putting the slices in the grass. Because remember, I never had an aerator before, so even though I have an aerator this year, I'm still going to follow the same procedures I did last year, because I still, you know, like I said, had to see my pictures, a good lawn. So maybe next year, you know, we'll see. I'm stuck in my ways a little bit. So, uh, yeah, I just figured I'd stop the video to show you guys and explain to you why I did that. All right? Put you guys back up, and we'll make our last pass with the mower, the Time Master. All right, guys, so we are almost there. So if you look at the lawn, actually kind of looks a little bit better than what it was. Somebody, yeah, it's a bruise, remember. We're doing all right, we're doing all right. You can see the lawn is starting to change a little bit of color because we're taking out that dead grass, that gray. All right, so this is gonna be my first time aerating ever. We're gonna use the Red Baron here. Toro 680. Aerator, this thing's older than me. I am 32. That's on this video. And this one, this thing is from 83. It's actually the same age as my wife. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so let's talk about this aerator real quick. So, this 
So it's an old aerator, which is fine. We have this bar in the front, that's our weight kit. That'll help us with the plugs here. Now, when you aerate your lawn, you want your soil to be a little bit damp. So we had some rain yesterday, um, which is perfect. So the soil's a little bit damp, so it gives, the, it gives the aerator a good opportunity to get a nice deep plug. Now, the newer aerators have a height adjustment. Um, this one doesn't. So the goal is to try and get a plug around this size of my finger. I don't know. If you get a little bit deeper, that's okay. Now, remember I marked my sprinkle head so I know not to hit my pipes, I hope. Like I said, this is the first time I'm aerating ever. This is the first time I'm using this machine. So, uh, yeah, let's give this a go. I am going to just do kind of like a live video because if I screw up, at least you guys get to see this. All right? The Red Baron, hold on, hold on. If you guys know anything about History, Google the Red Baron. Alright, sorry about that. The recoil was frozen for some reason. But, uh, don't forget, she's an old girl. She's gonna be finicky soon. <coughs> Actually, no matter how old they are, they're always gonna be finicky. So, let's give this thing a lift.
Oh, that was a workout. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Alright, so like I said, this thing was a... It was a freaking workout. But, uh, look at these plugs. Actually, I fell apart in my hand because the soil is wet. Oh, gotta find a good plug. Uh, we can only get pieces because it's wet. So this is how deep our plug is. You actually want to go try and get a little bit deeper, I think. No, because these are breaking up. So, yeah, just a little bit deeper. Um, it's very hard because this propels itself. But the deeper it gets, it's harder for it to move. And I don't want to burn up the clutch on this. So, when you aerate, the more holes, this is a nice deep one. The more holes in your yard, the better. Okay, yeah, so look, if I stick my finger in the hole, holy shit, that's, can you guys see that? Whoop, gone. Alright, gone. Alright, so, looks can be deceiving. Let's try a different hole. <sighs> looks can be deceiving. See that? So even though the plugs don't look good, they, oh my god, look at that, they are good. Alright? So, the more holes in your yard, the better you're off. So I'm going to do the same thing with the thatching. Four passes, you know, maybe even more. We'll see, but we're, we'll do four. Um, there's going to be no rhyme or reason to my passes up and down, so, I, so I'm just going to go up and down and then side to side and check all over again because this thing is a, the Red Baron is an animal. This thing cannot be contained. So, uh, yeah, we're going to go into, uh, some time lapse footage because I'm just going to go, if I can, I should be in shape, I think I am, a diesel mechanic. We're just going to do the rest of the three all in one shot. All right. Time for a break. Let me be very, very honest with you. That was a workout and a half. I mean, if you guys probably seen at the end, you guys are like into football, that's how I felt like I was. You know, you hit that sled, get low, and just, Jesus. If anybody's watching, you guys did landscaping back in the 80s, 90s, where you had to use this thing. Hats off to you. That thing is a workout and a half. Stay hydrated. I happen to have body armor. I'm not sponsored, but that shit keeps me hydrated. It's got a little sugar in it, so it's sweet. I like it. And I'm going to have some clementines. So, believe it or not, we are only halfway there, I guess. I mean, listen, we did all the hard work. Now we're going to have to start loading up the uh, spreader. And we're going to do our pre-emergent our, our pre and our seed and our soil conditioner, which doubles up as our watering agent to activate <clears throat> our pre-emergent. Now our pre-emergent is bought here locally from the Lee Asad Farm. Um, they're well known. Uh, it was my first time going there in Northport and it was just a mind-blowing experience. The guy was very friendly with me. And um, the bag cost me 60 bucks. I didn't get a chance to see if I could find the online cheaper. Because honestly, I just had such a great experience there that it's worth a couple extra bucks. You know, support local business. Even though they don't need my business. I mean, they're sponsored by the Yankees, too, to do their side. So, let's just do, you know, a recap. I'm just buying time for a break. Good full cleanup. Get this yard like a 
perfect palette, clean slate to start all over again. And from there, we weed whacked everything that's high down. Pulled out a couple of weeds, you know, because when you pull out the weed, you could replace that with fresh grass. Then we cut everything down. Then we thatched four ways. I don't know how many, I don't know how we aerated. I don't know. I got, I don't know. I told my father he could use this aerator. That is not going to happen. Obviously, he's older than me. This thing is a workout and a half. I'm going to end up doing that for him. His property is a lot bigger than mine, which is fine. I could use the workout. So, Dad, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. But I love you. It ain't happening. So, if you guys want a little background history of how I became the grass hole, I guess you could say it started with my father. Uh, he's impacted me in a lot of ways. But definitely, you know, one of them, you know, is definitely, you know, lawn care and property here. Even my mother, too. My mother's side has more of a green thumb than my father's side. My father is the only one that really does have a green thumb in his family. So anyway, at times I think I was convinced that my father had kids and boys just to do the yard work while he worked, which is fun. He's always working, so we're home. We gotta earn our keep. Well, my mother always did, you know, basil and a little garden, you know, fresh, you know, thyme and stuff like that. Rosemary and other flowers. And then my father, as we grew up later, he had an actual garden. And he was one of those Italian guys who would sit with the bow and arrow and pluck the squirrels because they were eating his tomatoes. Once he became retired, is when he really put his plan of action into the grass, into the flowers, and the landscape. He did everything himself. He had stuff brought in, you know, like terracotta statues and stuff like that. He got a lot of compliments. And then he gave up on that a few years later. <laughs> but he still dabbles here and there. Um, my mother doesn't garden anymore. But growing up, her sister, my aunt, they had a, an amazing green thumb. They lived with my grandmother in the whole house. They had a garden, and they I forgot what they're called, but we, we started planting them here now. They had these beautiful bushes that lined up and down the uh, landscape, the yard, and they were like white snowballs. because we were idiots back then or just nuisances we used to go around the wiffle ball bat and hit them because they would explode and now as I grow up I understand why they would get hit so my uncle has a green thumb too as well on my mother's side but I guess you could say out of all of them I'm the only one that takes my grass this serious but it is what it is and then this year well, last year, my grandmother passed away two years ago. I love her and miss her so much that we promised that we had that told my wife. Like, and my wife had a, does not have a green thumb. She will kill anything in it. She's a kindergarten teacher. She will kill anything she touches, plant-wise. Very good with kids, bad with plants. She doesn't water anything. So it's up to me. So, um, I hate weeding. People find gardening therapeutic. I don't. It's like the worst thing ever. I got a million other things to do besides spend all day in the garden. Absolutely not. So uh, I tried everything in the world to try and have some color in this house. And I just kept getting weeds and I got aggravated. So we did nothing. And my grandmother passed away and then I can't remember what these things are called. It'll come back to me. Maybe I'll do some Googling and I'll mention it later on. But they start out white and you can change the acidity in the soil and they can change color. My wife's favorite color is purple for a couple of reasons. So, we got some at Home Depot that are white, but then we found that they can't change color because that's the type of breed that they have. So we put white in one of the flower beds just to see if 
how they like it, and if it would take. It's a whole different bowl game. And they took, I think. And then they died as they came the season. So we're going to see what happens if they come back this year. And then if everything works out well, then we're going to plant them in the other flower bed at the entry, entry way of the driveway. Kind of go from there. You know, we won't have white on one and pink. You know, we'll rotate them out. Some white, some pink. So, you know, let's see. Rome was not built in a day. But, uh, yeah. So I'm going to cut you guys off right now. Get the uh, Scotch Edge Guard loaded up. I'm going to finish my Clementine. It's delicious. And then we'll start with the uh, spreading. Almost there. All right, break time over. So let's just take a look. This is all wrapped. What the yard kind of looks like for me going all over the place with this thing. I know we're scouring the lawn. See all these holes and hold up. So I think this is alright. I mean, I'm happy so far. And then, um, yeah, we'll move on to the next step. We're going to start with our um, pre-emergent first. And then we will move on to our grass seed and then our soil conditioner. So I am going to screenshot this paperwork that the league gave me. They are awesome. Starter fertilizer with mezzanite can be used for pre-emergent control for listed broadleaf leaves. All this crazy stuff. Crab grass, common chickweed, blah, 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 blah. So, can be used safely on Kentucky bluegrass, bluegrass perennial ryegrass, and turf-type tall fescue. So, I hope this is right. <laughs> or if not, we'll find out. This is the item number. So like I said, I'm going to screenshot this and I'll put this up for you guys. So they said on the Scott's Edge Guard, four and a half, and you could use this every five weeks, at least three times a year. It's $60 a bag, this gets expensive, but it is what it is. I've only used pre-emergent once, so um, yeah, we'll see. I'll probably end up buying more and more and more as I need it. So let's get this hopper Load it up. I have no idea. We'll get it in. You don't want to over fertilize, <clears throat> especially when you're not using non organic, because then you're going to burn your grass. You're gonna nullify everything you get. So, <clears throat> whatever I don't use, I'm just gonna put in the back of it. Load her up. Don't ask me how many square feet my yard is. I don't know. I think it's square. Scotch Edge Guard has a pretty easy, user friendly labeling system. See that? Five, five and a half, four, four and a half, three, three, no, no, wait a minute. Whoops, I gotta go this way. Two clicks. Four and a half on the money. Actually, I could take you guys for a spin while I do this. You want to go for a spin? Let's go for a spin. All right, we're going for a spin. Now, where's this edge guard? Edge guard off? Yeah, we don't care. It's uh, it's Preventa. So we're gonna just make one pass. I know it's probably oops. I know it's probably gonna be hard for you guys, especially most people. Men, we like to overdo things and make sure there's coverage. Remember, this is going to burn. So. 
you don't want to do, you don't want to overdo it. So four and a half, we're going. And you will just want to be observant of where you're spraying. I guess you want to just broadcast. So four and a half, you guys see, that's are moving pretty good. We're good to go. Yeah, it's good just to get a good view of this. I'll take this all the way back here, unless we need to burn this up. So actually, I'll spot on. I think I was. Hopefully I was. All right, we are done. Now, now I don't want to really overlap this. I kind of want to break this up. She really don't want to burn anything. Or two. Kind of just pick that around because that'll do that. All right, and we are done here. I guess you could say here's the main stuff. The main star of the show. Oh, one hand, please don't rip the bed. Kentucky 31 Tall Fescue. Can I post this? You guys have any? This whole bag is going on my front yard. That is non negotiable. Remember, we are overseeding. Ah. It's almost as tall as the garbage bag. We're going to have a really good time. Alright, so let me just uh, get this thing loaded up in the hop. Maybe a nice action shot. I'll load up this hopper. Now, we are going to keep the hopper at four and a half. And we are just going to make pass after pass after pass until this whole bag oh, has expired. Because remember, we are overseeding. Alright, we are almost done. Kind of sort of the last step. Topsoil. Scott's Premium Topsoil Lawn and Garden. Organic Matter, Sphagnum, and Peat Moss. Peat Moss holds moisture. So that's what we want when we're doing grass seed. So, uh, yeah, if you guys could see my yard. Remember there was bare spots? Not no more. This is the definition of overseed. We 
can't see that coverage. Look at that. Just seed everywhere. If I can't grow grass, you can't grow grass. We got problems. But uh, yeah, so here we go. So topsoil, you just kind of have to spread by hand. I don't have a wheelbarrow. So I just kind of walk around with the bag and dump it and spread it. Let's try and put it in the hopper. Trial by error. All right guys, so I raked everything out. I worked the seed in with the topsoil. So now, what we have to do. All right guys, so everything is down. Went off with the rake and I spread the topsoil and I worked, I mixed everything in. All right, basic kindergarten stuff. You guys remember going grass? Kindergarten? I already do. I also remember my kindergarten teacher, Miss Dorley. Miss Dorley. If you view this, this video is dedicated to you. She told me how to grow grass. Anyway, what we are going to do to tie this all in the grand fiesta, bonanza, whatever, rally, right? We have to put water down to activate everything. So we are going to kill two birds with one stone. Earthright mushroom stuff. Roses, trees, shrubs, vegetables, and turf. This is a soil conditioner. This is organic, so if you put too much, you will not do any harm. All right? So, little side story. I came across this product because it got lost on the internet, and we were talking about thatching and aeration and the importance. And at the end of this video, we'll go the pros and cons of what people think and what I think. So anyway, this one guy does not believe in aeration. And people were saying that's impossible. And uh, supposed to show your lawn. And he posted a picture of his lawn. It was absolutely gorgeous. And the thread went dead. There, there was no response. So then he took the initiative to... Since he... I guess when you're in an argument, you're in a battle going back and forth... He had the advantage, and then he just went on the attack, and he said that he uses this stuff right here. I think this is made by Toby Tobin, if I remember correctly. He is, I'm uh, doing some research, he's a huge following down south. Um, has his own radio station. And um, down there, they have a lot of clay-based soil. And this soil conditioner makes their soil uh, basically into good soil where it can grow. Uh, inhibits a very strong root, which is what you want, especially in new grass. So, this is combined with water. Um, I ordered the wrong one. It comes with the spout, so I have to integrate it into something else, which I did. So, as I'm watering the grass to activate the soil, the pre-emergent, with the starter fert for the new seed, the topsoil, we're also going to be doing soil conditioner at the same time. 
All right. So, um, yeah, I will set you guys back up. And we'll go from there. Basically, just kind of need to clean up. First, we need to clean the hydrator and stuff. Hydration is very important. The beverage for today is Crispin Rose Hard Cider. Me and my wife went out over the weekend to the Rock and Fish in Northport Village. Great experience. Beautiful night. And they had these on there. First time ever because they don't serve any alcohol. And uh, I drank my body weight in these. Definitely a good time. So, wife picked up these. It's obviously at a deeper discount, but you can't put a price on half of this. And then we'll start talking about the pros and cons. We can play devil's advocate. Alright, so anyway, there are people that do not believe in Thatcher. Now, I, on the other hand, had great success for two years just thatching my lawn and dropping the height of my thatcher one level to create slits in my yard and then do my seed and the topsoil and the soil condition. So, the counter argument for thatch is thatch removes a protective layer in your grass and in your soil. Now, by removing the thatch, you are subsepting your lawn to diseases and weeds. Now, how do you get diseases and weeds? So, birds, wind, other animals, people, people walking on your yard. Just think about it. They're going to walk on their lawn, such and such's lawn, anybody's lawn. Whatever that, whatever they put on their shoe, it's going to translate onto your yard too. Now, if you have a landscaper or you are a landscaper, if you do not desanitize your machine and your blades between each account, you are traversing whatever that lawn has onto the other lawns that you're cutting. Because remember, not all lawns are created equal because <clears throat> one customer could be paying for a you know fertilization and soil package and you just want, you know, the, the mow blow cut. MBC. That's all you want, nothing else. So what do you think their yard looks like compared to yours? They're gonna have, you know weeds and all this other crazy stuff and you're not but hopefully you know your landscaper sanitizes your blades or you're a grass hole like me where I do everything soup to nuts and you are not allowed to step on my front yard you are not so uh, yeah I just have to send a text message out to everybody who had Easter Sunday to remind them not to step on my yard that we have a wonderful relationship with our neighbors who like to come over and stop by and they're trained but I will give them a courtesy text message. Hey, you know, the yards in the beginning stages, please do not step on They uh, aren't as serious as me, but they are aware of their yard. And, you know, sometimes I'll cut their grass. I won't let them cut mine. But, you know, they, they, do, they do do the Scots program. So it's not the end of the world, but... You know, this year I'm doing Kentucky Toll Fescue, uh, first time. Um, hopefully, 
you know, it really, really takes compared to the wrap detergent that I've been using from Ocean Steam. I will um, post a picture of the wrap detergent I was using. By all means, go ahead, use it. It's an awesome seed. It freaking striped awesome. But I really want to take my yard to the next level this year. Um, you know, you can never be the master of anything. You're always learning. So you always got to keep pushing yourself. So I think after Kentucky Toll Fest you takes here, I mean, that's it. I'm good. And just every year, I'm just going to spend one sixty. So I have like 300, let's just round up, 300 bucks. Between the seed, topsoil, mushroom stuff, and this, uh, the pre-emergent, right? And then you have your other Scott's program. So let's just say 500 bucks. Now that's not bad because, you know, I do, I do also do small engine repair. So if you subscribe to my channel, you get updates on my lawn and everything else that I do. I sell homeowner's packages, whether it's a lawnmower, a weed whacker, a blower and a snow blower sometimes you know and these people tell me that you know they're following the landscaper because that's what I put in my thing follow your landscape take control of your yard it's a really good advertising pitch and a lot of people are saying that these guys are hitting them for 125 an application now true green I don't know what true green charges for an application you know what's their bare minimum now what's it worth for you to drive your vehicle with insurance and all these crazy you know uh, licenses and all this stuff to just just to spread fertilizer now there are horror stories with true green that i've been reading in the community forums how uh, they bill you when they don't even show up or they bill you when it's too cold or too hot so you know the money that you know you're saving by doing your own lawn like you should spend the extra like that seed i put down i think like two or three after two or three passes with the spreader my overseeding was done but it's only 100 bucks. So I'm just going to cover the whole front yard. It's like that, that competition, that, that thing like that Scott's is doing, you know, like these dad things. So this is why I went. I just did 300 bucks, probably at five at the end of the season, which is, to me, I think is reasonable. I do not do my backyard because of the door. Um, a lot of foot traffic getting put in and out. I do, not, I do not bother with it. If I have any leftovers, that traverse is over there, but I'm not even, even going to bother. So, yeah, so back to Thatcher. People don't believe in Thatcher. I do. Now, there are people that don't believe in aeration because there's liquid aeration, there's soil conditioners. This is my first year aerating, and to me, honestly, I believe that aeration is not going to be an issue because, think about it, you're creating holes in your lawn, and then you're overseeding on top of them. So that seed is going everywhere, and... When you're overseeding, you increased chance of that seed getting into the holes. And then also when we did our thatching, we'll split seed, we turn the thatcher into a split seeder. So now we're just, it's just, we just have so many opportunities and avenues for grass to grow. It's almost like impossible for grass not to grow if you follow my method. Now the only time grass is not going to grow is that maybe I did my research wrong and in Kentucky told Fesky, here in Long Island, New York, it's not going to work. But Kentucky Toll Fesky is as popular in Pennsylvania, popular in Maine, um, some parts of Connecticut, it's really popular. So I don't know why it's not here on the island, but you know, I guess this is going to be trial and error. And you know, we will find out because if you look at some, some seeding packages, they have Kentucky Toll Fesky. But they're mixed with other Ys and other bluegrasses. Um, some people don't believe in going, putting all your eggs in one basket with seed because if you get a fungus or some type of disease, it's going to wipe out your whole lawn instead of parts of it and then you end up with a bare lawn. So I rather, like I said, I didn't take my lawn down to the skivvies. I didn't gut it. I didn't take it down to the soil. I didn't rip anything out. You know, so I'm going to be using my existing rapid turf and... Um, my Kentucky Toll Fescue too. Now, am I going to continue with the rapid turf? Depending on how the fescue takes? Absolutely not. Never. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll put some pictures in there too of, of these lawns down south that are just, just gorgeous. And, and the 
lines and the stripes. It's the only reason why I'm doing this. The stripes that they're laying down are just beautiful. And striping is a whole other uh, world. And you're going to see some of these crazy designs, which I tried to do in my yard, but I couldn't, I couldn't emulate them. Because I guess my grass just didn't take it, or I wasn't comfortable, because sometimes they burn patterns into their yard. And uh, I'm not comfortable with that just yet. So, you know, let's just see how this goes. So now, if you did all this work, do not touch your yard. Resist the earth to touch your yard for at least three to four weeks a month, which is another reason why I didn't put any Milo down. Logery, Logery, whatever. I did not put that down because that's very rich. And it's very high in nitrates and that will infuse your soil and it's gonna make your existing grass take off. So, and it's gonna help your new grass too, but since your grass is already established, that's gonna grow at a more rapid rate than seed that you just planted. So you're gonna be forced to cut your grass when you really shouldn't have. So I don't believe in that. I am not going to put Milo down. I haven't put Milo down when my seed did. So I'm gonna continue, you know, that path. And you just have to remember, please, 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 that your lawn, you have to treat it like a bruise. It's going to look worse. It's going to get worse before it starts looking and getting better. Have tunnel vision. Do not look at other people's yards and lawns. Um, worry about yours. Worry about your lawn plan. Stay focused. Stay committed. And then, um, like I said, I'll try and... Depending on my growth, you know, I'll probably post an update in a week or two. Um, just see how it goes. And I'm not going to probably, I'm going to hold on. I'm not going to try and cut my grass for at least a month and a half or two months. Just for, just depending on growth, just for shit to give it. Now, the growth I don't care about in my established grass, the growth I'm talking about is the new grass. Because if you cut the new grass when it's too early, you're going to rip it out or you're going to kill it. So you're just going to nullify everything that you do. Do not put any other lawn treatments down, unless it's like a spectricide for bugs. Um, I'm not going to bother with that either. Um, spectricide is for the grubs and stuff like that. We don't have that problem here on Long Island. We do have a problem with bugs. So but I'm going to wait for the new grass seed to establish. It's not a bad thing to infuse your lawn with a lot of things. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just my personal practice and belief. Uh, just so many things at once, I believe. Like, you know, you're personally overwhelmed with all these things being injected into you, what makes the soil no better, that's my rationale, there is no medical, scientific, you know, this is me just off the top of my head using, you know, fact and reason and basic, you know, logic, but uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, and even if you do, you know, like I said, I'll show you pictures of my lawn, it's been freaking awesome, this is the way I've been rolling, and that's just the way I'm going to continue to roll, and as, as better products come out, because that's what happens over time, well, nobody ever heard of organic lawn care until these past couple of years. You know, then I'll modify my plan. But uh, organic lawn care is very expensive, so I just run a hybrid program. You know, between organic and, you know, chemical. You know, the best of both worlds. And my whole thing is that I stress is that if it's green, it's for me. Because I feel it's overwhelming and it's also costly to chase every different type of weed, sedge, crabgrass, you know, crabgrass obviously, but if you have patches of crabgrass here and there, let it go. It's different if your yard is crabgrass. That's a whole different story. My yard is not crabgrass. And if this is your first time doing your yard, it's okay. Remember, it's a bruise. So, you know, you might not have a, 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 the best lawn this year, but wait till next year, because it's only going to get better and better and better. And as your yard and your soil and your seed and your grass is, is trained in condition, your yard is probably going to be the first to pop up green compared to others. As we live in an area, all yards and all lawns are created equal, but it's what you do with your soil and with your grass seed is what makes it different than any others. Some people don't do anything. They just let Jesus, whoever, you know, take the wheel 
and then whatever happens happens. You know, that that's not me for some reason. I just don't like that. You know, I want a nice green lush yard that I like to see on TV and in the stadium. And that stadium, the ducks, love the ducks. And some of the stuff I see online, it's, it's I don't know for some reason. You know, I can't can't help but not want to have a nice green lawn. But I can, I can give a crap less about flowers and trees and gardening and stuff like that. So it is what it is. So if you guys found this video um, helpful, please smash the like button. Subscribe for updates about my yard. I'm going to do a video log. So basically every time I cut my grass, you know, we're going to do the MBC, mow, blow, no, mow, blow, trim, MBT using my cobalt, which the batteries died. So, um, yeah, subscribe. Because, you know, we'll do updates on my lawn, but I'm definitely going to, you know, video log or vlog, whatever the terminology is, my yard every time I do something. Now, I'm not going to worry about the backyard. The front yard is my main concern. That's what everybody sees and nobody's allowed to be on. The backyard's a different story. So, but if you take pride in your backyard, then please follow these steps in your backyard. Uh, for me, and my current situation right now, it's very difficult too, so it's kind of, uh, you know, Jesus takes me on the backyard. Whatever happens, you know, happens. So, remember, smash that like button, subscribe for updates, and uh, appreciate checking out the video for this episode of Pat Taste Performance. We are not performing anything on the machines, but we are performing on our yard. Oh. And shout out to one of my subscribers. Um, I haven't, you know, it kind of brushed my mind, but I really haven't put any effort into um, stickers. Uh, he created a, a sticker and, and a motto, which is, is pretty cool. Um, so I forgot to bring those home from work. He actually stopped by my job and, and handed them to me. And ironically, he's also another flipper. Uh, he buys and sells equipment just like me. Um, I got him into lawn care. He's actually the guy who borrowed the Red Baron, um, serviced it, got it up and running, and then uh, gave it back to me. That was his rental fee. And uh, in the process, he got me stickers. So shout outs, man. I appreciate it. Um, so I guess when we hit 100 subscribers, when we do the 100 subscriber video, um, people comment, and I guess we'll do giveaways sticker giveaway a decal giveaway whatever you want to call it pretty cool so that'll probably end up on Mandingo I gotta order new stickers for Mandingo because they're starting to fade I'll take you with me All right my metal militia sticker oh, 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 oh. Record up on stuff. My metal militia sticker with the American flag on it is starting to fade. My Detroit Diesel sticker is starting to fade, which is what's in this truck. So, um, yeah, let's just, you know what, let's just take a look at the carnage. This is what it looks like right now. Got old blue. Got the red Baron. My Greenworks 2300 PSI pressure washer, which is amazing. Um, I did a review on that. Get that, love that, my Toro Time Master. Uh, my Snapper High Back, if you're into your lawn, definitely get one of these, but I have the Time Master, so that's gonna be up for sale. And my Husqvarna. Yeah, man, so, here's the beauty shot. One more time in the yard. Remember, do not touch it, do not go on it. Three weeks. If you could hold out longer, the better. You're giving the grass seed a better opportunity to germinate and get a nice established deep root. So, don't forget, smash the like button, subscribe for updates and more how-to videos, and I will see you guys on the next episode of Pate's Performance.